Their immediate innate response to that is, oh great, uh, not only am I, is it gonna cost me to come see the chiropractor, but they're gonna try to sell me a pillow and an ice pack, et cetera, et cetera. Hey, it's Dr. Miller with AMC. I wanted to take the opportunity with this video to kind of introduce you to our next series on office evaluation. But before I do that, I thought I would take a moment and talk about why is office evaluation even important? Um, and I can assure you from our perspective and with what we've seen over the years, this is an incredibly important topic for us to discuss. And that's why we've dedicated the next uh, five videos uh, to Office Eval and how to do it properly and correctly. Let me start by saying that this is not about you. It is not about your comfort. It's not about whether you want to keep your office clean and tidy. It's not about whether you want to make sure that the front of your office looks the way that it should, or even the parking lot. This is about your patient's experience. It's about how they feel and whether they like or trust you as they're walking up to the front of your office. Um, Doc, I can't tell you how many times when, when, when we have a brand new AMC member come on board with us, one of the first things they do is do a very, very in-depth recording of their office as well as the front of their office. If, um, you know, if a patient walks up to your, your front door and all they see are an out of control uh, flower garden or no life at all um, and a very, very, just very plain, very stoic front of their office, if the parking lot, the lines aren't drawn in or painted in and look crisp and clean, uh, there's mold growing around the door, uh, whatever it might be that turns them off, you're, you've already started the experience with that patient. And let me tell you, that's, it's a negative experience. A statistic that I think is important for you to know is that, um, we, and we've proven this over the years, that a new patient into a chiropractic office can actually be thinking about going to a chiropractor for up to and even more than two years. So my point here is that you absolutely need to make sure that there's nothing that um, causes the patient to dismiss their experience with you. Um, in previous videos, when we talked about referrals, we've told you that the patient's got to like you and they've got to trust you if they're gonna refer uh, other patients into your office. So office evaluation, again, it's not about you. It's important for them to have a good experience visually. Um, you know, what, what does your office smell like when they walk in? Um, is, it, is it warm? Is it inviting? Um, it, th those are all very, very important things. What are they hearing? Are they, are they hearing music? Um, and what is that music? Um, you have to be very, very careful about all of these things. And we'll be talking about that in the next series uh, of, of videos. Uh, Docs, it is amazing to me what we have seen over the years. Um, a couple of examples. When uh, a patient walks into an office and again, this is the first time they've been in a chiropractic office, and the first thing they see is pillows, ice packs, nutrition, and anything else that you can imagine that innocently enough, as a doctor, we put there because we want our patients to know that we sell those products and we make them available for our, for, for our patients. But when that's the first thing that they see walking in the door, their, their immediate response to that, remember, they have an innate too, their immediate innate response to that is, oh great, uh, not only am I, is it gonna cost me to come see the chiropractor, but they're gonna try to sell me a pillow and an ice pack, et cetera, et cetera. So that's very, very important. There's a proper place for that kind of merchandise in your office. And I promise uh, in the next coming weeks, you're gonna hear exactly about that flow and how that works. Another thing, um, you know, sometimes if we've been in our office for a long time, it's not uncommon uh, for there to be cobwebs in the corner, uh, for the staff area to, you know, have a, a paper accumulated and, you know, kind of stacked up and certainly the doctor's area, treatment area, uh, the therapy area. Uh, it's very, very important for that to be kept clean and crisp and tidy because again, it's all about the patient's experience. Uh, if, they, if, if they feel like it's a messy office, they're going to feel like you're a messy doctor. And, and I know that's, that's probably harsh, but it's true. 
um, there are a lot of chiropractors out there and you've got to set yourself out as that, um, that go-to doctor in your community. Let me give you just a little bit of a, a, a go-to for this particular video. I love to have my doctors and their staff um, at one, one meeting uh, out of probably every quarter, um, we used to go outside, we'd take a legal pad with us, we'd go outside, we'd walk up to the front and everybody's taking notes on what, what do we see? What, what's out of place? What looks really good? The first time we walk through the office, we walk through as a brand new patient. We go everywhere a brand new patient would go in the office. We're making notes, everybody is, staff, doctors, um, and then, you know, so we, we follow the flow of a new patient and then follow them back out again. Then we go back outside and we do this as a, uh, a maintenance patient or a regular office visit patient in the office. And we go everywhere a regular office patient goes in the office. Um, once we've done that, we sit down. Uh, it might take the next two or three weekly meetings to work through all of this, but we go through and we fix the things that are wrong. Um, whether it's, you know, we gotta clean some things on the walls or repaint the walls, whether, you know, there are cobwebs in the corner that somebody missed, it gets busy and it can get really busy. Um, so that's a, that's a great um, tool to use to make sure your office shines and looks like uh, something that patients want to be a part of. Okay, so here's what you can expect in the next series of videos on this topic. The first one will be next week, will be with Dr. Brubaker, and we're gonna be talking about how to maximize your office layout for a better patient experience. Anywhere from 500 square feet to 5,000 square feet office, offices, there is a right way and there is a wrong way to set up your patient flow. It increases your efficiency, and when we increase your efficiency, we increase your productivity. Um, and that's so very, very important. I can't tell you how many times I've spoken to doctors over the years who, who come to AMC and say, man, I'm, see, I'm seeing 12, 15 patient visits a day and I'm exhausted. And there's a reason for that. And Dr. Brubaker and, and others uh, in this next series are gonna be talking about the reality of that and how do you overcome that. So instead of seeing being exhausted at 12 to 15, you can see 100 patient visits a day and do that efficiently um, and, and, and feel like better than you did when you, were, when you were exhausted seeing 12, so I promise. So that's next week with Dr. Brubaker. Uh, then in two weeks, uh, Dr. McMurtry is going to be talking about how to optimize patient flow and again increase your efficiency in the office. Uh, so the same thing there, um, going from 12 to 15 uh, patients a, a day uh, to upwards of 100 patient visits a day. How do you do that? How do you keep track of the notes? How do you keep track of you know what did I say to this patient? How do you make that flow happen in a way that's efficient, not only for you but for your staff, and then that your patient experiences um, the best care that they can utilizing that efficiency. Uh, in three weeks, uh, Dr. Horrell is gonna be talking about jump seats and resting area. Now, some of you may know jump seats as hot seats, uh, but that's a very, very, very important part of office flow and office evaluation. And she's gonna go into quite a bit of detail about how those hot seats work, those jump seats, uh, and why it's important. I think of an example, and she'll probably share it too, but uh, a doctor many years ago in AMC, um, he joined, uh, came on board, almost skeptically thinking that we would be able to make a difference for him. Uh, he had a great practice, he really did, uh, but he was looking to go to another level. And uh, all that happened for him initially was uh, for efficiency, moving one, one chair, putting it in the proper place and teaching the staff how to use, utilize that chair effectively. That doctor went, f increased their practice $10,000 a month just by placing that jump seat in the proper place and utilizing it efficiently. So you can look forward to that video in three weeks. And then our final video of this series is gonna be from Joel, um, Joel Slack on our IT team. And he's gonna be talking about five tips to grow your chiropractic office online. And I'm sure that that will have interest for all of you because uh, the reality is we're living in a world where an online presence and social media and all those things are very, very important. So Doc, I encourage you to tune in uh, over the course of the next several weeks. Uh, of course, we want you to watch every single video that we produced, but these next four videos will be specific to office evaluation, how to do it right, and how to make a difference for your patient. 
because I'm gonna I'm gonna say it again. It's not about you. It's about your patient's experience. So you can look forward to that. We'll talk to you next time. Have a great day. If this has been helpful, like and subscribe to be notified whenever new videos come out. As always, we're here to help. Text us any questions you have at 904-966-4996. AMC is your guide to becoming respected, effective, and valued in practice. See you next week.